Welcome to the first Tech Tangent Micro Tangent. This will be an ongoing series of videos that are aimed at quickly covering specific topics. Giving them their own space rather than forcing them into larger videos should let them be far more useful in the future. Enough introduction though, let's move on to this topic. When building my 486 DOS PC, I used a case that has a turbo button and frequency display. There was no documentation included for the display, which is a common problem nowadays. Figuring out how to use one can be tricky, so I decided I would record the process I used to reverse engineer my display so I could show anyone how they could do the same thing. Unfortunately, at the time I didn't realize how much these vary from one manufacturer to another and even the signals the motherboard sends or receives can be different, so these steps ended up being somewhat specific to my unit. Still though, this may help someone, so I figured it wouldn't be a bad idea to put it out there. Before I run it though, there are a few things that you should know about how turbo mode works with these types of displays that I don't cover in the video here. The turbo speed of the computer is actually the native speed of the CPU. It doesn't overclock it or make it faster in any way. What it's meant to do is let you slow down the computer for compatibility when you deactivate turbo. For example, the Sharp PC7000 here runs at 7 MHz in standard speed mode, but 4.7 MHz in slow speed mode to match the original IBM PC. You would do this for older software that was directly tied to the CPU speed for timing. Turbo modes are pretty much always on or off, so when you see a case that has a display, it's not actually measuring the CPU speed. It's just alternating between two light patterns when turbo is turned on or off. These patterns are set with jumpers on the back of the display. The unit I have uses binary coded decimal chips to drive the LED displays, but it's very common to have just jumpers with no chips. In that case, the jumpers directly connect or disconnect the LEDs in the display from power. In both of these cases, you should have two separate banks of jumpers. They may be pushed close together though. These two banks are for each digit of the display. If you have a three digit display, you will also have a third bank. You will likely have to try and find some kind of documentation to know how the jumper should be positioned. T-shaped clusters that set whether a segment is on for high, low, or both speeds seem to be common for the direct LED control types. Once you know how to adjust your jumpers, you can safely play around with the positions to set the display to what you want. The turbo off number should be the native speed of your CPU. The turbo on speed is going to depend on your motherboard and how it slows down your CPU. I don't have an easy answer for determining that speed, but you may be able to tell what it is with benchmark tools. I just set mine to 33 megahertz and moved on. Lastly, the most complicated part. Not all displays and turbo switches will be compatible with all motherboards. The display can have the switch connected to it and send a signal to the motherboard to change, or the motherboard can have the switch connected to it and tell the display to change. Also, the logic active signals can be high or low for the motherboard. If it's low, it can be difficult to measure with a multimeter, something to be aware of. Alright, that's enough general info. Now I'll show you how I was able to reverse engineer the connections to the display that I have in my case. I didn't get a manual or documentation or anything on how to use this, so this is somewhat of a problem. This is normally up in the front of the case, I just took it out so it's a little bit easier to work with here. Now this is uh, thankfully not impossible because I did get this computer in like new condition. So I have the power cable for it, uh, this cable, and this cable, and these should be everything I need to make this work. Now I don't actually know this, I'm just making an assumption that since this was basically a new case, I have everything I need. Now obviously this must be power, so I have an ATX power supply off to the side, and I'll just go ahead and plug that in. Now we can see from this that this is wired into the 5 volt connection on the Molex connector, so we know this device needs 5 volts. Now this is a very simple device, and the only ICs on here are these two 74 series logic chips. Now, looking up the data sheets on these, we can see that this is the voltage in pin and this is the ground pin. So all we have to do is figure out where each of those is on here. Now, the uh, vo five volt pin would be how you get power to these. So let's just see which one of these is the five volt input. Oh, that one's five, and none of the other ones are. So that's the only pin directly connected to the five volt rail. So now we need ground, which is going to be this one. 
and we could start off by checking the pin right next to our 5 volts. And what do you know, that's ground. So we can safely say that this is how you power this, and sure enough, it is. But that looks a bit odd, doesn't it? Well, uh, <laughs> I said these are 74 series logic chips, and these are binary to decimal converters. And these banks of jumpers are how you change what frequency it displays when you have the turbo mode engaged. Now, we actually can see that the turbo mode is on right now. If I could turn off my light, you'll see that that LED is on. Now, how do we control that? Well, we have the two other cables here. One of them is a single wire, the other one is two wires. So let's take a look at the two wire cable. Now, what do we have on here? We have the seven segment display, the turbo LED, which is clearly getting power on its own. And we have the hard drive LED. The hard drive LED has no business being related to the frequency display and the turbo indicator. So probably it's just on here for physically having it in that location, which would mean that it probably doesn't interface electrically with anything. And we have right next to the hard drive indicator, these two pins, and one of them has a little plus on it. And sure enough, if we turn off this light again, we apply power to that using the diode test on my multimeter, we can see that LED does in fact turn on. So we know for certain that this must go to here because that's the only way you could get a hard drive indicator signal. Continuing on, um, I dropped a cable I need. We still have to figure out how to send the turbo indicator signal. So, well, if that's the hard drive indicator and that's power, these are for setting the frequency this displays that really only leaves this area. So we have this jumper and we have this one pin and we have a cable with one pin on it. So it stands to reason that's probably how you control the turbo indicator. Now, let's see what happens if we send a five volt signal to that. Oh, it gets uh, really bright. Okay, that's that's clearly not it. Uh, what happens if we send ground to that? Ah, it shuts off. Okay, so we're pulling it low to turn off turbo mode. What happens if I move this to over in the other spot? We invert the signal. Haha, -ha. okay. So we can see that this is clearly the turbo input pin and we have an option of controlling how that works. So we know that is turbo mode. Now the frequency is not changing between the two modes. Well, that's because these are currently set to the same thing. If I take one of these out again, or two I suppose, we can see it will change between the two frequencies. So now we know everything about how to use this. I'll just have to go through and play with the jumpers on here to figure out the setting that matches what I want. This is probably binary. And uh, yeah, this isn't gonna be too hard. So that's pretty much it. That's all you need to know to figure out how to use one of these. I'm sure every computer is different, but that's a pretty good troubleshooting step, I would say, to learn how to use one of these if you get a case without a manual. So that's how I was able to configure my turbo frequency display. In the end, I was also able to make mine show 99 with the LED on when turbo was off and 33 with the LED off when turbo was on, which gave a more logical feedback that you would expect when you slowed the speed of the system. Now again, this is fairly specific to my unit, but hopefully some of the information I was able to give you points you in the right direction on how to configure yours. And I'll link to where I got all of those manuals in the description, so maybe you'll luck out and yours will be listed there. But that's everything I've got for configuring turbo displays. I hope this was helpful to someone, and if you want to support the channel, I am on Patreon. But for now, that's it. I'll see you next time.